Hi, I hope your finals are going well. My paper was on an analysis of teaching methods in children for progression to higher math in high school. So basically all this means is that I looked at what teaching method is best for elementary and middle schoolers when you want them to succeed in AP calculus in high school. But we should really care about this because of this. I'm holding up my really big AP physics binder. So when I took AP physics in high school, I did really poorly compared to the rest of the kids in my class. And I was really confused about why. So my AP physics teacher told me, you're not stupid, you just didn't get taught the right math. So she found that all of her students that really succeeded came from other states that didn't do Common Core. And unfortunately, the kids who were from Utah and who had been taught with Common Core didn't do very well in her class because they didn't understand the concepts as deeply and as well as they needed to. So as parents and as practitioners, we should be really concerned about this because we want our students and our potential children to get into the best programs and to have the best understanding that they need. So to match what these kids in my AP physics class did, I found the Singapore math method, which I think is the closest method to what they were doing. And then I compared Common Core, which is taught with the traditional math method. So Singapore math, you might have not heard of, but it's math from Singapore. And it's also a philosophy, curriculum, and approach to teaching intertwined. So they have a lot of scaffolding in the form of bar modeling, three-step learning process, and covering fewer topics in greater depth. And then in the Common Core, it's really just a teacher presenting a mathematical concept and reviewing the steps required to solve and giving students additional problems to practice, which just means they're at the board and then they give you a review sheet. So Common Core is popular among some educators, but overall, spoiler alert, Singapore math is a more effective teaching method in elementary and middle schoolers for progression to advanced high school math classes because it affords better teaching methodologies, knowledge of math concepts, and student preparedness. So what are the teaching methodologies? Well, they provide an opportunity to apply the math concepts with instruction methods outside of just repetitive rote learning and instruction where it's not just a bunch of practice problems you're actually going through and you're applying it to real world scenario scenarios where you're looking at a problem-based development instead of just illustrating the mechanics and the formulas. So this means that they are using focused curriculum and textbooks, well-trained and knowledgeable teachers, and they have societies that value education. Common Core really just expects children to use a mathematical concept before they have been able to apply it. And they really reinforce this rote repetition, which is just handing people worksheets. And unfortunately, this really doesn't apply the math concepts and it doesn't create a good fostering environment that helps your brain really understand and be able to utilize these concepts at a deep level. So Singapore uses really simple explanations for hard concepts. They have the concrete, pictorial, and abstract, and this really helps to triangulate their teaching methodologies as well as their students' knowledge. So because of this, they found that sixth graders in the Singapore math program can solve complex multi-step problems that most U.S. students, even those in algebra classes, would find challenging. So Singapore affords a better knowledge of math concepts as well. To unlock the power of math concepts, we really need to understand the why behind concepts. And when Singapore students understand the why, they have a better understanding of those than traditional math. So they're addressing this why through math concepts taught by well-trained teachers with world-class materials and problem-based explanations, as well as having this culture. And what's really important to know is that in Singapore math, they learn things like implicit math, which is basically math equals me, or the idea that math is in my life and I am math and I am part of the math of the world. And it's really important because culturally this helps aspire to be better academically and it gives them a driving force to be good at math as well as to better understand and apply these concepts in the real world. So these students have a lot more knowledge, obviously, so they have a, a deeper understanding of mathematics, as well as students who are disadvantaged are improving where they are improving over 30% at scoring on grade level on their state standardizing tests. So this means that these students who are now scoring on grade level are able to progress to the next level of math, meaning that they are able to achieve at higher levels as well. The students are also very prepared when they do Singapore math. So they are able to better progress from different levels of math. So if you look at this slide and you see that this weight 2006 actually had one of the best turnouts I've seen in all the research where they 
had all eighth grade students enroll in Algebra 1 after implementation, whereas they only had 25% enrolled seven years earlier. They also had a significant increase in the percentage of ninth grade students enrolled in Algebra 2, and they had students enroll in AP Calculus for the first time, which is very, very important to note because AP Calculus and having calculus in your mathematic <laughs> registrar is really important because it helps you progress and understand things like computer science and more advanced physics and chemistry and all really the math behind science. As well, it also gives you uh, college credit. And so this is driving students to be more academically driven and to do better in the STEMs and STEM sciences and to go into them in college. Whereas internationally, we can see that the United States education and STEM scores and people going into STEM is actually decreasing, unfortunately, and that we are falling behind internationally in terms of our innovation. So Blalock 2011 taught that student achievement is connected with positive attitudes. And there's a lot of positive attitudes gained from learning with Singapore, which is increasing student achievement in all educational systems. So learning with Singapore math actually helps students learn better and study better, which makes them better students overall. So Landsberg 2008 also found a 31% increase for scoring on grade level for disadvantaged students. And Reynolds observed that disadvantaged students scored higher on a standardized test, as well that they had higher percentages of proficient and ad advanced scores in these tests as well, which is really important to note that students are not only able to progress, but they are progressing well. So obviously, Common Core has been around for a little bit, at least, depending on where you've been the last 20 to 30 years. And it does provide good skills and conceptual understanding and problem solving. And it has some good mathematics content, as well as opportunities to develop good mathematical practices and study uh, practices as well. So, you know, you've got these good beneficial teaching methods like uh, spiraling and where you're essentially able to utilize spacing out learning to increase memory retention and to reduce your learner stress. If you know anything about Asian countries, you know that they have, specifically in China, they have the Gaokao, which is the Chinese SAT. And around the Gaokao time, suicides go insane in China and the learners are just absolutely terrified because they only get to take it once. And because math is such an integral part of their culture and because academics are valued so highly there, it places a lot of stress on them. Whereas Common Core is a little bit more relaxed, you know, you do it in grades 9, 10, and 11, and then you get to take an alternate class in grade 12, depending on what you want to do. So this program is but a little bit better depending on what type of student you have, what they're good at, what your child wants to do with their life, or even how much stress they want to endure, right? So we need to be aware of these differences and these audience design issues where Singapore math is meant for Singapore and Common Core is meant for the United States. And we need, when we integrate math programs, we need to be careful about what we're integrating and how we're doing it so we don't put too much pressure and we don't apply something that doesn't apply well to the United States. But they found that it does apply well. But they've also found that Common Core applies well, where you're able to positively impact procedural tasks and a couple of other different things and different types of problems with Common Core. So as we go back and forth, we can see that there's a lot of really good things that come out of Common Core, where there's good spiraling and there's good spaced out studying for memory retention and to develop good study habits. However, there's also a lot of disadvantages because students instead of del really delving into topics one at a time by doing algebra one and two and geometry one and two, instead they are doing math one and two, which is all level one of geometry and all level one of algebra. And then as they progress in the late grade levels, they're slowly doing the next levels. And unfortunately, this isn't giving students a deep enough view into these concepts and it's not helping them reinforce them. So obviously, as parents and practitioners, this is really important because we need to understand that while traditional math has value, it's not sufficiently meeting the needs of children aiming to successfully progress to higher math in high school. So this progression to higher math is so important because it's a stepping stone for advanced educational degrees. And so we need to 
notice that Common Core, while it is good, the United States needs to improve if we want to continue to be internationally competitive, especially in STEM. So if given the option, it's prudent for parents, teachers, and students, as well as the federal government of the United States and as, as a whole, to choose a better option to create an internationally successful and educationally competitive country. Meaning that while Singapore math has been called miracle math, it isn't necessarily the miracle people claim it is. And I'm perfectly open to more research being done and us deciding that there is a different program that is better for the United States as a whole. But I think it is important for especially different school districts and homeschool programs and tutoring services and academic consultants to really know what options are out there and what they actually mean and how they can help students. So Singapore math overall is a lot better because we were able to explore, evaluate, and apply math concepts and knowledge, and it, you overall have a lot better chance of progressing well into higher math. So potentially, Singapore math could be applied and taught to teachers and then utilized in the classroom, meaning we could teach it at a university level to students getting educational degrees, and we also need to look at uh, Singaporean math textbooks at various grade levels, meaning potentially you would have traditional math in the classroom, but maybe different textbook styles instead, as well as we need to revise our standards and our budgets and our programs so that we can incorporate some of these benefits and these good things that we've discussed in Singapore math, while possibly containing some of the benefits of traditional or common core math. But overall, Singapore math is a better program and it's a better application of math and teaching methodologies if you're wanting your child to really succeed in higher math in high school. These were my references.